Welcome to Running the Table, the podcast where we run through everything on the table in the world of college basketball, and we're back for another conference breakdown. We're starting the Power Six with the best conference in college basketball, not named the Big 12, the Big East. So, Tim, are you ready to go? A lot of teams to talk about, so let's run it. Yeah, it's an 11-team conference, and nine of them are in the mix, and we're going to talk about all of them, starting with the UConn Huskies, the defending national champions. They're 26-3, and 16-2, which is first in the Big East, and they are second in the AP poll right now. This UConn team, as scary as this might sound, might be better than last year's. Danny Hurley has weapons at his disposal everywhere, and anyone can kill you on any given day. This offense was already elite. They're their third in adjusted offensive efficiency for, from Kempom. And with Donovan Klingon now healthy, their defense has improved into elite territory. The Huskies have star power. They have depth. They do the fundamentals well. And they might be the best team in the country, although some random trained people in nowhere Indiana might have something to say about that. But I digress. UConn, they're really good at basketball. They are. They're they're a very impressive team to watch. And one of the things that that I am most impressed by is not just the talent on their team, but I have to say I am very impressed by Dan Hurley and his coaching for this team. Um, One thing that if you watch UConn play basketball, holy crap, their offense is intricate and intense and they will beat you in a multitude of ways. They will wear you down and they will attack you from all different, you know, all different parts of the court, all different guys. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I, I, I'm most impressed by, by, by how they run their offense. And it's been a while since I've, I've shouted him out, but I have shouted this guy out on the podcast before. There's a YouTube channel um, called hoop vision 68. Um, he has, he just came up with a fantastic video of why UConn's offense is po- basketball poetry. And if you want to understand more about what it looks like to essentially like analyze an offense and why it is effective watch how UConn's offense plays and watch him him talk about that because he goes into intense detail and overall UConn is just they are a fantastic team and they are they have been tough all year long other than you know their their three little slip-ups here and there Um, but every team has had those so overall this team is tough Well, when you think about good teams in the Big East, right behind them is the Marquette Golden Eagles. They're second in the Big East at 13 and five conference record, 22 and seven overall and ranked eighth in the AP poll in the country. Shaka Smart and Marquette mean business this year, trying to shoot higher than the disappointing ending they met last year in the second round. The duo of Tyler Kolick and Oso Iguodaro are the guard big combination leading a unique Marquette offense. They're really high on screens, back cuts and off ball movement. They can also lock you down on defense as they force turnovers at the highest rate in the conference. Yeah, this Marquette team is is super solid. Obviously, I, I watched them play Purdue early on in the in the year this year, um, and they've had they've had a, a couple more slip ups than than we expected out of a team as good as they are, and they have been playing very very well for the most part. Um, but they're they're a team that you know they they rank very highly um, on on both ends for the most part. They're they're top twenty in both offensive and defensive efficiency, um, and they've they've played some really great basketball throughout a, a lot of the year. I think the biggest thing to watch for this team. Um, is Tyler Kolek's recent oblique injury. Um, He came down with an oblique injury in, I believe it was their last two games. I want to say it was two games ago now. Um, And he has been shut down for the rest of the regular season right now. And they're kind of waiting and trying to see of his potential presence in this conference tournament. They're still obviously a very good team without him, but he's a massive hole that with as good as he is, you can't pretend like they're not a different team when he's not playing. So that's going to be the biggest thing to to watch for them um, going into conference tournament. And then the NCAA tournament is whether or not he can get healthy and stay healthy. Um, but this team is they're 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 intense on both sides of the floor. Well, you talk about Tyler Kolick, the reigning Big East player of the year. His presence is absolutely monumental just because of what he does with and without the ball in his hands. But without him, they still have dudes that can fill in in his stead, such as Cam Jones, who's actually the leading scorer on the team, Stevie Mitchell and David Joplin, just to name a few. So they got the guys, they got the horses. We'll see how deep this Marquette team can go. And just a little tidbit, they lost to Butler at home. Speaking of teams that lost to Butler at home, Creighton, after a trip to the Thank you. I've been working on it. 
After a trip to the Elite Eight last year, Creighton's big three has emerged into a big four. The big three of Trey Alexander, Baylor Shireman, and Ryan Kalkbrenner are dangerous as weapons as they come, but Stephen Ashworth has joined the party. This is a Creighton team that is that very, shoot. very top-heavy. Yes, Stephen Ashworth can shoot the lights out the ball. But what I mean by top heavy is Creighton just doesn't use their bench. They have a six man nope. rotation. It's a, they, it's a weird style of basketball. They just run those guys into the ground. But the thing is they play so well together. And yeah. when they control the pace of the game, they can beat anybody in the country, including a home win against UConn when UConn was ranked number one, their first ranked win against the top ranked team in their history. And they thrashed them. Absolutely. Yeah crashed a 19 point victory so the way you can throw Creighton off their game is by controlling the pace of play if you do that if you make your shots Creighton is a beatable team but they're still very very tough oh 100 percent. Creighton is a team that wants to slow you down as much as possible because if they try to run those guys and really getting into you know a running shooting match with with the, their opponent it's going to be tough on them to keep those guys in for as much time as they you know try to um but yeah so the, you you're absolutely right when it comes to the key is you know controlling the pace um for for, for them in general they have such talent in those you know that top five top six that if they're able to to maintain that level of consistency with those guys, I can understand that understand why you run with them. But it's very difficult to find guys that can play that many minutes consistently and you know not get hurt, so on and so forth. But they are a they are a very very talented team, a very high powered offense when they are on. Like it shows eighty five against UConn. I guess they obviously incredible UConn team. Um, I mean, even, so, even so in that, are, even if that lost to Butler, they put up ninety eight. So mm -hmm. when you let this offense run the floor, they can go, go, go and get buckets. Yeah. When they are on, they are 100% on and they're a very good offense that, you know, their downfall has kind of come on the occasional time where they have been off. And, and when they're off, they have been pretty darn off, but that has been the rarity. They're still a very, very good team. Um, so uh, in any given, in any given game, I think they can beat any team in the country as they showed against UConn. We're done with the locks of the Big East. Those three teams in UConn, Marquette, and Creighton are shoo-ins to make the tournament. Now we're going firmly on bubble watch for these next five or six so teams. So many. Yeah. Starting with Seton Hall at 19 and 11, 12 and 7 conference record. They're fourth in the Big East. And Seton Hall sits on the right side of the bubble as one of the last four in. They're led by their defense, and they can shut down a team when the matchup is right. However, when facing a team that is clearly better than them, such as a Marquette, a UConn, or a Creighton, they don't handle it very well. And if they play a team that is clearly better than them, they're susceptible for an early exit in the tournament. Yeah, no, I mean, that's that's very valid. I think the one thing that is currently holding them on the right side of the bubble is their win over UConn back in, in December. Um, so obviously since since then playing some of those those teams has not worked out that that well for them. Um, but but they are a team that that their defense is is really where where they can um find their success. For instance, in that win against UConn, they held them to 60 points, which since then has not been a common thing for UConn. But I will say I think part of that at that time was um for UConn, they were dealing with Donovan Klingon's injury. Um, so that was a bit of a, a different time for UConn. Uh, but for Seton Hall, I mean, they they are a team that, you know, again, when they're playing solid, they can compete with, you know, any team in the Big East or, you know, a lot of teams in, in just around the country. Um, so I think it kind of just comes down to what version of Seton Hall are we going to see? Because they have been susceptible to, like you said, slip ups against teams that are, you know, clearly better than them and just have more talent than them overall. Um, but I still think that they are a team that on any given game, you, you, you can see them at least make it tough. And when you make it tough at the end of, at the end of games, anything can happen. Absolutely. This next team, the Providence Friars, has had an interesting season. They're also sitting at 19-11, 10 and 9, which is good for a tie for fifth, a three-way tie for fifth in the Big East. Uh, this team has been rocked by injury. This is not Providence at their best. Missing Bryce Hopkins for the year, clearly their best player, hurts them a lot. And this team could have been a lot, could have been a lot different. Well, when Bryce Hopkins was healthy, they were up in the top 25, and now yeah. they've fallen to just missing the cut, being on the first four out. A light end of the season in terms of strength of schedule also hasn't helped them much, but they tackle UConn to wrap the regular season. A good showing there, and the Big East tournament 
that could be enough to push them over the edge and get them in. Yeah, they're 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 right there right now, being in that first four out. So again, certain things kind of have to fall in their favor in terms of teams that are right along with them in the first four out and the last four in. Um, but they their biggest focus is just trying to 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 make a solid performance right now. Overall, they they are a a, a solid team where they struggle is on the offensive end. Um, they make their money on the defensive end. And again, if Bryce Hopkins was there, I think he would help a ton on that offensive side of the ball, but um, they've got to work with what they have right now. Um, so they, they really need to focus on trying to figure out how they can knock down shots and, and just be as effective as they can on offense while also maintaining, you know, what has gotten them here in terms of being as close to the tournament, which has been their defense. After that, we have the Villanova Wildcats sitting at 17 and 13. They're 10 and nine, a part of that three-way tie. This isn't your national championship contender Villanova, but they can still surprise some people. The Wildcats overcame a very rough January, but bounced back with a solid February to reappear in the tournament picture. Right now, they're on that 10-11 seed line inside of the bubble. They're sticking true to their brand. They're incredibly fundamentally sound, and they're still the best free throw shooting team in the nation. You don't want to foul them because they will absolutely make you pay. And they have guys that can not only knock down free throws, but knock down shots from inside and out of the perimeter. Eric Dixon down low and guys like Justin Moore, Mark Armstrong, and TJ Bamba on the perimeter makes Villanova a team that you can't sleep on. 100%. I mean, we, we talk about how important free throws are, and they can be absolutely be different difference makers in a lot of games. So you don't want to let Villanova stick in a game with you because close close games down the stretch, um, they have the ability more than most teams to really close close games out um, with you know, that, that fundamentally sound play. And even without Jay Wright, they have kept a lot of those you know, sort of Jay Wright isms of what, what made the program so good when, when he was around. So um, yeah, they, you, you were absolutely right that they had a very, very rough January. Um, but, you know, they, they've gotten themselves back in the picture. And again, they, they need to focus on, on making a, a, a solid showing to make sure that they don't, you know, fall, get, fall themselves out of favor um, of the tournament there, but they're a team that, you know, given that just the experience and, and, and where they've been as a program, this program knows how to win. Um, so if these guys can, can pull it together at the right time, I mean, you could, you could definitely see some success out of them. The final team of that fifth place triumvirate in the big East is the St. John's red storm. They're at 18 and 12 overall 10 and nine in conference slick Rick Pitino, the first year as head coach of the Johnnies wasn't going smoothly until he called literally everyone and everybody out in the media for being Something slow happened. and unathletic. And he basically just said, Hey guys, get good. And then that completely flipped their season reignited something and they they spark plug that tournament run because now they are right on the door. They're knocking on the door of the first four out. They still have some work to do before they enter the field, but a good Big East tournament means that they got a shot. And as a roster, they have that guard big punch of Dennis Jenkins and Joel Soriano. So when you get those two going along with guys like Chris Ledlam and Jordan Dingle, they can make some noise. Oh, they definitely can. And, and and you talk about, you know, the difference in, in how they were playing versus how they are now. They they certainly showed that um, in towards here back in the end of uh, February where they just took it to Creighton at home um, and, and they had a, a super solid showing. And even when Creighton was trying to climb back in the game, they just would not let them. I saw some of the end of that game and they looked as confident as ever. So um, I don't know what it was about that, you know, media statement that flip some switch, but they're playing very solid basketball right now. And, and they look about the best as, as they have all season. So they need to continue to carry that momentum if they want to find themselves, you know, right on that, that last four in. Um, but so if, it, even if they don't win uh, the big East tournament, if, like you said, if they have that good showing, I think that they can go into selection Sunday with, you know, fingers crossed and a lot of hope because they are mm -hmm. right there. Um, and if they can prove that they're continuing to play solid enough basketball that they do belong you may just see him in the dance. Slick Rick Patino, was there ever a doubt in your mind? He's he's something, that's for sure. But the, the point that you make about, you know, being right on, that's that's true not only for St. John's, it's true for Providence, it's true for Seton Hall, it's even true for Villanova, that yep. a good Big East tournament, multiple wins in the Big East tournament are going to go a long way. Because this conference and losing and losing quickly would do the opposite. Exactly. For all of these guys. 
this conference has beaten each other up and they're all like in position to be in position to make the tournament. So it's going to be a dogfight. It's going to be a really entertaining Big East tournament, but we got two more teams to go through next of which being the, the dreaded, the putrid Xavier Musketeers. Um, they all stink and they all smell bad. This version of Xavier is weaker than in years past and an afterthought for the NCAA tournament, but anything can happen at Madison square garden. They have the conference's leading scorer, so they have that going for them. But the Musketeers just can't be a one-man band. Yeah, no, we 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 found this with a lot of teams of when you're able to focus on one guy, it does make you easier to defend overall. And I think you've seen that in the reason of why they are sitting at 500 right now. Um, having one talented player is fantastic. You love having a guy that you know you can trust, but you need pieces around him. And they just, they've struggled to find some of those, those pieces um, around Quincy Olivari. Um, so, you know, they're, they really need to to, to make a big push well, if they're going to, going to have yeah. much of a chance here, but um, I, they, I, I they think need... that, yeah, they need more depth and they need some soap because some say that they smell bad. I'm 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 glad to glad to to make that clear. I think that'll be interesting to see whether or not the committee takes that into consideration come selection Sunday. I don't think smelling good would help their case. I think they're out, but you know, maybe that's true. We'll this isn't this isn't Georgetown from 2021. I can tell you that right now. Yeah, I would say I would have to agree. I mean, I, I'm I'm sorry, 500 overall and 500 in conference isn't going to cut it, even in this conference is as tough as the Big East, you know? Yeah. So not biased at all, by the way, not, not, not biased at all. And speaking of the best school in the Big East, the Butler Bulldogs. Speaking the, of not being biased at all. <laughs> the third best basketball team in the state of Indiana in, in college maybe second borderline borderline depending on who you ask um we're a lot better than we were uh for the past three years uh, oh yeah absolutely at 18 and 13 9 and 11 in conference they're sitting at ninth but they're not like totally out of it they're like 99 percent out of it but there's a one percent chance big. oh my goodness they need to win and win convincingly in the big East this, tournament, if they're this end of it. the season has just been brutal for them. Like you oh guys were sitting goodness. in a decent, a decent spot and then losing as many games as you did within essentially this last month has, has really just kind of had you on the slide of, of falling out of, of tournament graces. So you mm-hmm. got to be able to turn something around significant if, if well, they're, they're going to try to find themselves in the tournament. Yeah. And, but they're still, if, they're still pretty no, close. True. True. They're not uh, entirely out of it. They're not entirely out. And if you want to watch when Butler had that stretch where they played well earlier last month, and then if you want to watch the uh, the losing streak, I, we have all of those games recapped on the channel. So a little promo if you want to watch any of those recaps, feel free. But the thing about Butler is they're streaky and they don't have any one superstar that can kill you. Like, Thought maybe it would be Posh Alexander. He's a scrappy point guard, um, but he has not been the star for us, not by a long shot. It's been the big three of DJ Davis, Pierre Brooks, and Jamil Pelford. When those three guys are clicking and playing well and gelling and knocking down shots, then you get games where they score 99 points at Creighton, or you get those wins at Marquette. That's a borderline top 10 win. And those two wins are why we're still in it, by the way, because we are absolutely capable of playing as well as anybody in the conference. I mean, we went to, we went to stores in Yukon and lost by single digits. So that's got to tell you something. But when those three aren't on the same page and they're discombobulated, then you get those clunkers that, you know, punctuated like by that losing streak that pretty much knocked us out. So yeah, like like we already said, gonna take a lot. Not impossible, but at least we smell better than Xavier. Hey, you gotta take the little things sometimes. But yeah, I mean they they just have found themselves sliding a bit too much at the wrong time. Um, but we talk about playing playing well at the right time. It's now or never. Um, mm-hmm. so either they 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 turn it around and give themselves a chance or or we see them, you know, lose their shot early. So they in terms of of the balance, I mean, you like having the big three of being able to, you know, move the ball and um and find sources of offense around the court. But um mm-hmm. 
you've got to be able to get those guys going um because they and, are and like, the heart and soul of this yeah. team and there's like a big three that Creighton has where all of them would be considered like superstar number one options on another squad like even in the conference and then you have Butler's big three which we just plucked from the transfer portal each one of those guys threw them together said hey you score well you let's score see well, how it goes score well yeah let's see how it goes DJ Davis can knock down the free throws and he can shoot on the run. Uh, Pierre Brooks is a catch and shoot guy and Jamil Telford's a slasher. Like we, we have, we have all these guys that can do different things, but you got to get them on the same page with all that being said, Tim, who do you have winning at Madison square garden? I mean, I would love as a Purdue fan to try to be like, eh, you can't, you kind of ain't all that. Yeah. So good. Yeah, they're really they're good. Very, they're a very yes. good basketball team. Yes, they and are. And I got to be honest, I don't know if I see them slipping up here in the conference tournament. They've just been playing so well, even with their occasional slip up. Like, UConn just looks so good. Um, mm-hmm. So unless they happen to have this game where they manage, where something goes wrong and they just have a massive stinker, if you, got, if you get even UConn 70%, they're still really hard to beat. So mm-hmm. they just, they can score the ball from so many different places and so many different ways. Um, like you talk about guys like Tristan Newton um, and Alex, Alex Caravan, guys that have been there for a while, Donovan Klingon. And then you bring in a guy like Cam Spencer, who's now shooting 45% from three for them, adding to their, their three point shooting. It's just, it's crazy how they could score the ball. So um, no, I, I, I can't, I can't deny how good UConn is. And I have to go with the odds of them steamrolling this, this conference tournament. So if you ask me who's going to win the Big East tournament, there are two schools of thought. There is the obvious school of thought that says UConn is going to win because they're the best team in the country. And when the national champions get bigger, faster, stronger, you know, it's really hard to deny. deny. Or Tim, and stop me if you've heard this one before, Butler. Okay. Yep. Nope. Think I've heard this one before. Could be honest. Get we, hot you know, at the right time. Recall big, to big, last year. Big three playing together. I'm sorry, we're actually over 500 this year, so this actually kind of has some weight. If, yes, what, it has more weight than it has last year. Don't tell me that it has legitimate weight. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. We're winning the conference tournament. We're going to do it, book it. No gimmicks, no jokes. I'm dead serious this time. Look, We've hey, beaten. I'd love to see it. It would be super cool. I'd love to see Butler in the tournament. If, if there's any team that's going to go would it on be a one heck of a run, dude, if anybody's going to go, go on a Georgetown run, it's going to be us. Listen, we've beaten Creighton at their place. We've beaten Marquette at their place. And we've hung with UConn at their place. Now you switch mm-hmm. it over to Madison Square Garden on a neutral floor. If you Butler just gets... have to be playing your best basketball again. That's what it comes down to. If Butler gets back to playing their best basketball, yes, they have shown that they can compete with anybody in this conference. Trust in Thad Mata. Trust in the boys. Butler Mystique, the Butler Mystique got us. But that's all we got for this Big East breakdown and preview. If you want to watch our other conference breakdowns, we just did the mid-majors, so you can go check that out. Tim has Boom Buster Believable and Purdue recaps. I have Butler recaps and so much more as we head through March. What a time so to much be content alive. in March. Oh my goodness. But it's crazy. It's We're a fun time. Though. Absolutely. And if you want us to talk about anything else, let us know because why the heck not? And until next time, we out.